this one's gonna be a little more off the cuff. I didn't know how to put this into slides. So I'm just gonna go ahead and walk you through the process of this video. So what I wanna talk about today is um, bundle size for one thing and how to analyze what is causing your bundle to be as large as it is. The reason I'm talking about this today is I've found that as applications get larger, especially when you talk about enterprise applications, they become too large, which it, it's nice to be able to bundle everything and have imports and exports and all of that, but we really need to start thinking about the impact to our end user. The bundles that I worked with um, in, in my day-to-day -day job, it was over 16 megabytes. It had uh, seven different applications bundled into one app, and it, it led to over 10 second load time, and that's on a good connection. If I swapped it to 4G and um, throttled back that connection speed, it ended up being over 30 seconds. So what we did was utilize a, um, a bundle size tool. And what I'm gonna show you today is how to implement that into your application. So the, the tool that we used was the Webpack Bundle Analyzer. You can see the GIF here going through kind of what it does, but we'll get into that in a little bit later. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and install this uh, plugin. We're gonna do a yarn add or an npm install of webpack bundle analyzer. And we're gonna save that. So now that that's uh, installed, we're gonna grab the plugin and we're gonna say webpack bundle analyzer. And it has a property on it called the bundle analyzer plugin. So that's what we want. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna add it to our plugin. So we're gonna construct a new um, instance of it. You don't have to provide it a configuration object, but for this example, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, if you don't do it, it ends up creating a server and it will update the bundle size as your code changes. But I find that that dynamic nature isn't necessarily important to me when I'm trying to analyze our bundle. It's more of a, I'm gonna to try to figure out how to remove something and see if my app still works and then check the resulting size than it is to update it constantly. So we're gonna change the analyzer mode from server, which is the default, to static. And we're gonna have open analyzer set to true. What open analyzer does is when it completes the process of analyzing your bundle, it will open up the resulting GIF. So now that that's added, we can execute a webpack. What this will do is we'll build the project and ultimately create the bundle that's to be analyzed. So you can't see it now, but it's on my screen over here. Um, but this is the resulting bundle. So you can see that about half and half is my node modules and the other half is my source code. Um, you can also see that my ES6 series of videos takes up a good portion of that source. So it's, it's pretty cool that you can bounce around and look at certain things. You can also see from the hover text, I'm not sure if I can zoom, I can't. Um, so it, it shows you the stat size, the parse size, as well as the gzip size. This is important if you have a server that will um, gzip your content and serve it to the client that way. Um, so you can ultimately see that my application um, is extremely tiny, it's 487, um, kilobytes before it's gzip and only 94 kilobytes when it is gzip. But if, like I mentioned earlier, the application I worked on was over 16 megabytes. So I had, I had a very, very large graph of dependencies. Um, for this project is extremely small. It's mostly just reveal and some webpack related uh, processes. Um, so there's not a whole lot for me to remove, which is good, but not realistic. So for in one case that we encountered was we use Moment to do our um, date manipulation and calculation. Um, if you haven't used Moment, please check it out. It's an amazing library. Um, but what it does is it includes a whole bunch of locales. Well, right now we can guarantee that we're only gonna be in English. So what we need to do was remove all of those locales that weren't pertinent. So that's an example of something you can identify using this plugin and address with that knowledge in mind. Now, one thing to note 
is this will run every single time I do a webpack build, which is an, a little bit annoying. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our webpack configuration dynamic. So right now, I am exporting an object that represents our webpack configuration. The nice part about this is I can declare this as an object and manipulate it in a function and dynamically add or remove things based on environment variables. So environment is something that gets passed in via webpack and if you perform a webpack and pass it m dot some value, so let's say run analyzer, this property run analyzer represents whatever argument is passed in. So I can say if environment dot run analyzer, I can then go ahead and say webpack config dot plugins. So that's the property that we had um, the plugin on. And I can say plugins dot push since it is an array and we will construct that same analyzer plugin with run analyzer mode as static and open analyzer as true. Now we will return our webpack configuration object. So with the um, with the environment not set, you can see that it won't open the analyzer. Okay, sorry for the jump cut, but I had an outdated version of a global webpack. Um, so I had to go in and install that and didn't want to leave you waiting for it. Um, so you can notice a small change. Um, I have declared a default argument for the environment. That is because if we pass in just webpack, that object would be undefined. So we want to make sure that this doesn't blow up when that happens. All right, so that being said, let's do run analyzer, uh, where analyzer is the, or run analyzer is the name of the property that we're looking for. And if I set that equal to true, you'll see that when it executes, it will dynamically add the new plugin that we added and make it so that I can choose to turn on or off the fact that it runs the plugin. So it did run the plugin, it just opened on my other monitor. Um, so with that being said, we now have a dynamic build process where we can run our normal webpack, but also when we're trying to um, address our, our bundle size, we can run this analyzer as well. One thing I like to do is actually alias that as an NPM script. So I will do a new NPM script that says run analyzer, and it will do the webpack process for us. Webpack with uh, m dot run analyzer set to two. True, sorry. Um, so the reason for this is I can abstract out what properties being set, and also if I have a production build. So let's say we had um, a production where we run a webpack with environment pro uh, property set to true for production. If I wanted to analyze that bundle, I want to make sure that that I'm doing a npm run production and then the run analyzer. So, like I said, I like to abstract it out as an npm script so I can do an npm run run analyzer. Spelling it is important. And you can see that that, that uh, same script that we ran gets executed under the covers and will open the bundle for us. So uh, that draws this video to a conclusion. I hope that you enjoyed the, the, um, the new plugin and hope that it can make your bundle smaller and your load times faster. Thanks.